So you want to draw the perfect results table. In this video, I'm going to go through how to do that. To start with, you're going to need a ruler, a sharp pencil, and something to draw on. Sadly, pencils don't show up very well on camera, so I'm swapping mine for this big fat marker pen. To begin drawing your results table, start by drawing the outside edge, leaving the bottom open in case you've got more results to draw later. Now you need to do a line across the top. This is for your titles and your units. Next, we're going to start putting in our columns. The first one is for the independent variable. It'll be helpful to explain this through an example. So imagine you're doing an experiment with your favorite toy car. You're going to put it down different height ramps and see how fast it travels. The bit you chose beforehand, the different heights of the ramp, that's going to be the independent variable. So we put height at the top of the column, then brackets, and in there the unit we're measuring in, centimeters. Finally, we add the values we picked before the experiment started. The next column across is for our dependent variable, the thing we measured in our experiment. So for the toy car example, that's the time it took to get from the top to the bottom of the ramp. When you finished recording your results, draw a neat line underneath. Then, because you were clever and used a pencil, you can rub out all the unwanted lines. Let's imagine you're a really good scientist and did three repeat readings for each experiment. Well, in that case, we've got to draw our results table slightly differently. To start with, divide the top box in half. Then, the box underneath, you're going to divide in half. And then those two halves, you're going to divide in half, giving us four boxes underneath. And on the top half, write your dependent variable. So for our toy car experiment, that's the time in seconds. The boxes underneath it are for your repeat readings and your mean value. And because they're all underneath the time box, it lets you know that they're all types of time. And that's it. That's how to draw your perfect results table. Before you go and draw your own results table, here's a couple of common mistakes to watch out for. The first one is this putting a separate column on the end for mean. But this time, there's no word above us to tell us what type of mean this is. Is it the mean time, the mean height, or a number to tell you just how likely you are to steal somebody else's sandwich? We don't know. So this is rubbish. You've got to make sure that word mean is underneath the word time so we know what type of mean it is. The next mistake is to do with units. Units should only ever be in the titles at the top and never next to the numbers. When it's next to the numbers, it can lead to confusion. So in the example here, you can see sometimes there's a unit there, sometimes there isn't. And then this one here can be confusing. Is this 2.55 seconds or is it 2.5 seconds? Is that digit on the end an S or a five? If you only ever put your units at the top, then this confusion will never happen. Now you know how to draw the perfect results table, you can do it in lessons and impress your teachers.